He was stubborn, to put it lightly. He became more masculine, more serious and more responsible. He's an interpreter, a person who is not armed with a weapon. He is a rather strict person. He is changing both himself and others. Tango dancers have their own tradition. They celebrate the first anniversary on the day when they first became engaged in this art form. I know that my tango birthday is on January 19th. Oleksiy Havris has had two birthdays for already six years. And this is all thanks to his friend, with whom they diligently chose the tango dance floor together. I came to tango through a deal with my friend. I would go with him to an Argentina tango, and he would go with me to Thai boxing. It happened that he could not come, but I already came, so there was no turning back. Determined, motivated, responsible and gallant, Alexei became one with tango. The first eight months of classes passed in the blink of an eye. During this time he practically did not miss any of his lessons. An interpreter by profession, he did not even suspect that in a few years the tango would pull him and many other guys out of a deep state of depression and would once again give them a desire and reason to live. If it was not possible to attend the lessons, it was such a tragedy for me, a true crisis. I believed that life was unfair. He even had to leave work early to make it to his tango lessons in time. In the evenings he went to lessons and then practiced milanga. It was a lifestyle. He did not immediately tell his parents about it. His father only learned about his son's hobby from colorful posters. We were so surprised that he was a dancer, we imagined he would be anything but a dancer. Well, I knew this from the beginning, so I tried my best to take interest in my son's life from his very first steps. His father did not go against the wishes of his only son, though. Now the parents admire him. In six years he became an excellent dancer at the age of 26. Tango dancing rocked Oleksiy's world several times. At one of the tango evenings he met his current wife Olha, a slender and tall brunette with beautiful large eyes, immediately struck a chord in the heart of this young tango dancer. But he was not able to dance with her right away, he had to wait for almost the entire evening before he could entice this beauty. If a girl dances well, she will not sit for a long time. And she returned the love. Back then it seemed that they have all their lives ahead of them. Festivals, bright lights, divine 1930s tango music. Ahead of them was life full of impressions and stunning adventures. Ahead of them was what they dreamed of. Instead of festive fireworks, there were barrages of multiple launch rocket systems. Before his eyes, mines were exploding, and there were trenches instead of dance floors. There was blood. Some friends suffered fatal injuries. Others remained disabled for life. Oleksiy was hospitalized twice, and he returned to war once again. Just like thousands of other guys, he does not consider himself a hero for defending Ukraine, his home, his relatives, his loved and close ones. He does not like to remember the war, and to this day he shudders from unexpected loud sounds when the music plays. He became different immediately. I asked if everything is fine. He always answered yes, but it evoked something. He left the peaceful Kiev. He went to the place where cluster munitions banned in many countries are used. He left like hundreds of other guys in black body armor and a helmet, not knowing that this outfit could not save his life. I didn't give much thought that my helmet can't protect me from anything. Gradually everyone's helmets were replaced. After some time, all had normal Kevlar helmets. He went as a volunteer, like hundreds of other guys. He's a reserve officer and interpreter. He did not see involuntary service, only had military training alongside with a degree. 
He came to the draft office three times, wanted them to send him to defend Ukraine. At first they said that they did not take any officers. Later he raised a stink when they offered him to protect just Kiev, deep in the rear. I can't stand on a guard of a bridge in Kiev without them. His parents did not even have a clue that he volunteered three times. I learned about this after he received a clean bill of health and one day before I took him to the draft office. His girlfriend did not know about this decision either, he kept it a secret. Half a year later, he told them about his three attempts. Alexei told me that he received a draft notice and has to go to war. Many people did not believe me. My parents, for example, they said, well, he has to go, but we'll come back in a month. So stop crying now. But for me, it was a huge blow. His determination and motivation played a role here as well. There wouldn't have been the fourth time, that's for sure. Walking there for the third time, I realized I was looking like a fool, coming and going like that, asking, please conscript me. If they don't want me, I won't come anymore. Three attempts are all it takes. When asked why promising young guy like him didn't sit at home, he responds simply. I looked at my circle and I did not see there a single person who volunteered. Memories still rub salts into his wounds. He makes no secret that there in the trenches, at the front line, life is perceived quite differently. It seems to pass by and you feel that nobody needs you at all. Everyone lives just like before. It's just you and those sitting in the trenches with you that feel lonely, abandoned and nobody cares about the war. These thoughts creep in quite often. Every soldier serving for their country at one time or another experienced these feelings and exactly these thoughts ran through their minds. And even when the guys come back home, these thoughts still haunt them. Alexei began to help himself and others. He did not feel abandoned or rejected, but he knew he had to do something. Their base in Dmitrivka was destroyed by the enemy. Everything burned down. They removed to the village of Raihortka. And it was there that Oleksii set his heart on organizing leisure activities for the locals and his unit. But he could not invite people to the cultural center. After all, it could immediately become a group target for the enemy artillery. He did not even dream about dancing, about tango. He waited for more peaceful times. This is how they were dancing later, in Starobilsk. He smoothed things over with the cultural center. He visited the secondary medical school searching for girls and hung posters about tango at the club. It was in Starobilsk that a relatively peaceful moment came about. After all, this is the rear, Oleksii recalls. From there, units moved to combat positions. Everyone had their own. It was then that Oleksii began to perceive what tango was about and that changed his life. It was kind of rehabilitation for himself and for others. In tango, we do a lot of work not only studying the movements, routines or elements. There are many elements in tango that are built on self-conception. Girls began to visit the dancing lessons later. First time, only one of many came. She was the most curious and the bravest one. When our guys brought her home, they were seriously surprised how far she lived and understood the distance she was going to walk all the way to the other end of the city. Alexei was afraid that his unit would not go to tango. The reason was that there was no one to dance with, and the guys do not dance with each other, so he could not force them to attend the lessons. I respect tango too much to give orders to attend it. There is no such thing as tango under the whip. The girls from their secondary medical school volunteered to dance with the soldiers. No one skipped a lesson. The guys who were at war had the opportunity to feel different for an hour and a half. Thanks to tango, they disengaged themselves from the barracks, the trenches and from artillery. After a tango, they felt like people, not enlisted men. If only you could see the guys who learned to dance tango, especially at the first lesson, you would see what they have in their eyes. Uncertainty, fear, doubts, doubts in their actions. Seeing soldiers in such a light is quite unusual, but it's normal for everyone who learns to dance the tango. Tango. 
Alexei says that whoever learns tango knows that this dance relieves a lot of internal problems and psychological complexes, which some people may not even know about. Sometimes you all need to do is close your eyes. Tango makes you listen to your gut instinct. When a man comes to a tango lesson, it can let him feel very well that someone needs him, that girls want to dance with him and even hug him, to hear from others that he is good at it, and most often these are not empty words. Most often the guys who come to us really get the hang of the tango. If Alexei or his parents were told in his childhood that he would dance the tango and pull others out of tough situations in life by means of dance, they would have hardly believed it. As a child, I wanted to do boxing. I was small and fat, and my classmates made fun of me and beat me. I went to my parents and told them that I want to take up boxing in order to defend myself. But my parents sent me to aerobics. I learned to do sun wheels, long flies, cartwheels, and even tried to do the split, but it seems to me I wasn't beaten any less often after going through these aerobics lessons. He was disappointed that his parents did not listen to him. But the last thing he wanted was to upset his parents, and so he continued to attend aerobics classes. Now, on many occasions, he remembers how his parents sent him to aerobics instead of boxing. I behaved like a girl. I wanted something that was beautiful, elegant, and probably something that I liked more. But this was not quite right. Boys are eager to get into such sports that make them strong and courageous. As a result, he did not attend aerobics classes for a long time. For his father, his only son is a hero. Even back then, in a small, plump boy, he saw the makings of a good athlete. So while he did not become a sportsman, he nevertheless achieved his goal, his father rejoices. Now he's proud of Alexei no less than before. And at the autumn opening of the Tango School, Alexei's father could not let go of his small camera. It became important for him to capture every movement of his son. I'm amazed that such a young boy has grown into not such a very outstanding, but in our view, sophisticated person. We're very pleased that he does what he does with such passion. I attend Alexei's dance lessons, but I've been attending them for only half a year. He captivated me with this passion of his, which is now his work. I attend very regularly. I like it a lot, and I can even say I spend less time at home. Sign, the father, continues to talk not for the camera. He says his son has changed and became more mature thanks to or in spite of the 13 months that he spent at war. Alexei's mother is also not holding back her tears. Yes, he became not more serious, but he grew into manhood. Yes, he went there, I will not say as a boy, but came back from the war as a more mature person. The fact is, people grow up there. However, their time stands still. And the life in our city develops and moves forward. But he feels like he got left behind in that time. It's when you feel that you are losing your precious time in life. When the world is passing by and life goes by like a fleeting moment. Alexei firmly decided to help himself and others to return to their lives. After the war, he opened a tango school. For veterans, lessons are free. His school primarily is a means of rehabilitation for those who defend Ukraine. I left somewhere for a week, did not dance, and got a feeling that I was missing something in my life. I came back, danced, and realized that tango was exactly what I was missing. Why do I think tango has rehabilitation properties? Well, because our veterans who return from the service on the front line and from the combat zone, more often than not, feel that nobody needs them. Even if they have their friends and families, they feel and know that these people do not understand them as well as their comrades in arms do.
Sometimes these brave guys just need to feel that they are needed by others.